Are you looking to easily provision persistent storage for your Kubernetes environments? With Nutanix Carbon and the integrated CSI driver, you can easily integrate with both Nutanix volumes and Nutanix files to provide persistent storage for your Kubernetes workloads. So something we touched on in the first demo video, but haven't talked about since, is that every carbon cluster is preloaded with our Nutanix CSI driver. This allows us to have integrated storage uh, through Nutanix volumes and through Nutanix files. So we created that default storage class, uh, which utilizes Nutanix volumes in the deployment video. So let's see how we can actually use that. So I'm going to go over into the CLI and do a git storage class. So we'll see that default storage class uh, and it's marked default. Now if I do a PVC, I'm also going to do a, all namespaces. And we see the PVCs that automatically get created for Prometheus and Elasticsearch. So if I up arrow again and clear that out, we shouldn't expect uh, anything there because they're all in the monitoring or Nutanix logging namespaces. So what we're going to do is actually make a persistent volume claim uh, to use this Nutanix volume storage. Uh, so if I cat out a uh, YAML I have, I'm going to do I read write once YAML. So we're going to see the storage class name here. Uh, and it's read write once, uh, which is a requirement for iSCSI. Uh, so if I had now do create, we see it gets created, and I'm going to up arrow a couple times to get a PVC. We see it's pending. If I just wait a couple more moments, we should see it change to bound. And there we go. It's bound, and now our Kubernetes pods can start using that PVC. If we come back to the UI and go into the volume section, we see our read write once PV claim. All right, so great. So that's how we can do read write once storage with Nutanix volumes. What about read write mini with Nutanix files? So I'm going to go ahead and come over to my Prism Element cluster where I have a file server. Uh, we see here the demo files. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new share. I'll name it K8. I'll leave everything else blank except for the max size, which I'll do a terabyte. I'll leave NFS selected. Uh, on the settings page, I'm going to leave system authentication, but I'm going to actually change this to no access, and I will add exceptions. So I'm going to add in my subnet for my Kubernetes uh, nodes. So if I come back a page, we see my nodes. So notice my master IP, 1045, 100, 123, my workers, and etcd. Uh, they're all in this slash 24. So I'm going to grab that, and I'm going to paste that in. And I'm also going to select the advanced NFS settings. So 1024 for both of these values, and I'm going to change this to all squash. I will hit next, and see the summary. It looks good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and create that share. So now back in the Carbon UI, I'm going to create a new storage class. I'm going to change my dropdown to Nutanix files and name it whatever is descriptive for you. And now I'm going to do the endpoint. I'm going to use an IP. This is just a lab environment. We definitely recommend in an actual production environment that you use a DNS name. Just for this demo, I'm going to use an IP, which I have in my buffer. And then my export path is just my share name, which was K8. Again, reclaim policy, whether or not you want to delete or retain the data. I'm just going to leave that as delete. I'll hit create. Now, if we go back to our CLI, we should be able to up arrow and see our storage classes. We see our file storage class that was just created. Now let me output another PVC YAML. 
and we see I have the file storage class created. And notice this is read write mini. So more than one pod can connect to this uh, PVC and both read and write from it, uh, which is unique to NFS. So it can come in handy depending on your workloads. And again, I'm gonna create it. So up arrow a bit and change this to my read write mini. We see that it was successfully created. And again, I'll up arrow and get my PVCs. We see it's pending. Uh, this will take a minute. All right, let's up arrow again. And we now see that it is bound. And we also see the read write mini access mode. Again, coming back into the UI, uh, we can go to the volumes and we see our read write mini uh, PV claim. And we see our file storage class. So that's how you can use Nutanix volumes for read write once and Nutanix files for read write mini using our integrated Nutanix CSI driver. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful and be sure to leave a comment for any other topics you'd like to see covered in the future.